good evening uh, my respected uh, faculties i am dr balamuli second year uh, resident from tanjore college and i'm going to present a case on uh, lymphedema uh, 54 year old male resident of uh, cochin laborer by occupation came with history of uh, genital and uh, right lower limb swelling of uh, two and a half years duration the swelling was insidious in onset and progressively increasing in nature initially noticed the swelling in the genital area and the swelling gradually progressed from the foot to the groin in the lower limb increased the swelling got increased with work over the course of the day and it reduces with the uh, rest and elevation of the limb the swelling was associated with recurrent episodes of pain over the right lower limb and external genitalia and fever chills and rigors six to eight episodes per year and each episode five to seven days there was history of on and off full smelling water discharge from the scrotum history of swelling over the anus with non streamlined micturition resulting in spillage over the genital area and soakage of the clothes since one year history of prolonged standing is there and no history of passing milky color urine no history of any abdominal swelling or lump no history of trauma to the lower limbs or external genitalia no history of any surgery in the groin right lower limb external genitalia no history of radiation exposure to both uh, groin regions and also i would also ask uh, for history of similar problems among the members in his locality and past three is not a known case of type 2 diabetes with systemic hypertension chronic kidney disease liver disease bronchial asthma tuberculosis or seizures personal history is a social drinker and apart from that there was no other addictions then family history no such uh, history among the family members on examination uh, after obtaining uh, concern of the patient the patient was conscious oriented and uh, cooperative moderately built and nourished no paler icterus cyanosis clubbing superficial inguinal lymphadenopathy was uh, present on the right side and there was unilateral right pitting pedal edema his vitals uh, temperature is febrile pulse is 80 per minute and uh, blood pressure is 120 by 80 mm mercury in right upper limb in supine position on local examination of the right lower limb with external genitalia on inspection there was unilateral edema of the right lower limb extending from the toes to the groin and both sides of the scrotum and penis there was multiple small vesicles like lesions present in the entire scrotum with lymphoria Penis was edematous with completely obscuring the urethral meatus and glans penis. The lower limb skin appears dry and there were multiple small hyperpigmented patches in the pubic region. There was obliteration of the normal indentation below the medial malleolus and fullness around the petala is seen. Obvious increase in right lower limb girth seen. No red streaks noted in the lower limbs and no prominent skin creases, no squaring of the toes. No hump on the dorsum of foot, no dilated engorged tortuous veins, no lipodermatosclerosis, ulcers, or scars, no intertrigo of the spaces. On a palpation, there's no warmth and no tenderness. Inspection findings were confirmed. The scrotum was edematous with multiple vesicles over it with lymphoria. Bilateral testis was palpable normally and no hydrocele was present. When perfusal skin was retracted, gland penis and urethral meatus was found to be normal. The edema was spitting in nature. We also look for stemmer sign. There is inability to pinch the skin of dorsum of foot at the base of second toe. And I would also like to take limb girth measurements from fixed points at different levels. Uh, at the mid dorsum foot level, lower calf level or and mid calf level, lower thigh level and mid thigh level. There was no normal active range of movements of the joints were present on the right lower limb. Distal pulsations felt normally. No sensory deficit. Superficial inguinal lymphadenopathy was uh, present, no mass palpable, and no organomegaly in abdomen examination. Hernial orifices were free, and other system examinations were normal. So, my uh, clinical diagnosis is secondary lymphedema, probably due to filariasis of right lower limb, stage one of International Society of Lymphology, and uh, external genitalia with secondary changes in the scrotum with, of stage three. Uh, Shall I continue with my management, sir? Yeah, yeah. No, no. One minute. Uh, I'll just wanted to check. Okay. Which one came first? first? He noticed the scrotal swelling and penile swelling, or the leg swelling? He noticed first in the external genitalia, sir, scrotum and penis. Ah, oh, yeah. So the first his problem started with the uh, genital uh, lymphedema. Yes, sir. And then he had, uh, even at the time, he had uh, lymphuria, isn't it? 
uh, no so first he had a genital lim uh, lymphedema and then the swelling progresses then he started developing uh, lymphuria sir yeah as per the picture uh, which uh, i saw in the morning uh, in the leg the thigh portion is enlarged uh, compared to the normal side but the no, dorsum no. of the foot yes sir you don't see much edema on the dorsum of the foot of the right leg yes sir so to have a lymphedema a classical lymphedema the swelling must start from the dorsum of the foot but in this case it starts retrograde his his swelling is more on the thigh than the leg portion almost like uh, other yes. normal leg on the foot portion did you notice that yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, that is why i asked this yes, question sir. specifically yeah specifically because the lymph yes, nodal sir. involvement whatever may be the cause yes, is from the bilateral nodes and more repeated adenodermal lymphangitis you said no repeated attacks of fever yes sir mm. so that in uh, clinical yes, terms we call it as adl adenodermal lymphangitis so that means the infection starts in the lymph okay. node and then comes to the dermal that is why it is adenodermal lymphangitis so because of that only he started getting the swelling more on the thigh if it is a normal lymphedema yes. sometimes in even filariasis you can get lymphedema without any history of fever any history of lymphangitis in such cases if you see the patient the initial thing is dorsum of the foot then uh, the leg portion then it goes to the thigh portion very rarely it goes to the thigh portion in this case particularly yes. because the genital involvement is the major involvement Uh, due to the disease and then it is retrogradely coming into the thigh so yes. now uh, you can proceed with the investigations what you have done so first i will uh, notice the problems for this patient or the swelling of the external genitalia with problem in maturation and secondary skin changes in the scrotum with yes. euphoria and the second problem is the swelling of yeah, the yes. lower limb Yes, yes. Yes, doctor. So the no. How do you go uh, about sorry, uh, so the staging, sir? The gentleman. Okay. Sir. First, I will do investigations to diagnose uh, filaria, sir. Uh, deduction hmm. of uh, microfilaria by examination of unstained blood under microscope or thick and hmm. thin blood smear examination stained by Janssen or stain can be used, but it is useful only in active hmm. infection. and these tests are done only in night time that is 10 pm to 4 am due to the nocturnal periodicity of the microfilaria hold on hold on here uh, serological Because... test yes sir no 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 hold on here for a minute uh, this lymphedema yes, if it is due to filariasis yes sir you know how long an adult uh, worm lives in the human being you sir, have any idea it takes uh, and it can live up to 15 years or even more sir no no the lymph i mean uh, the filarial adult worm can live only 4 to 6 years okay when the adult worm lives okay. you don't get this kind of clinical presentation by the time the clinical presentation comes it takes another minimum 2 years so that means 8 years back he might have had the active infection and then adult worm producing microfilaria which will be seen in the blood that time this patient won't come to you he has come after the clinical disease yes has progressed to the thigh so that means this man is a 54 year old man so he might have had the hag infection of lymphatic filariasis almost 15 years back at least 12 to 15 yes. years back yes. okay. so if you would have done this test or if you would have mentioned this test first people will appreciate it now when you see okay. a grade 4 genital lymphedema i don't think 
your microfilaria blood test will show anything positive or anything significant so it is just uh, for you to know that there is a test for of microfilaria which is very useful in the endemic area in identifying the preclinical stages of lymphedema so whenever you see either a leg or arm or a scrotum in the clinical stage 3 or 4 don't go and look for a protein with microfilaria test it will not be there in any case okay so uh, you don't tell this as a first uh, answer as your investigation okay. because this will not uh, be there okay. uh, more, uh, even in this case i am pretty okay. sure it must have come only as negative isn't it yes sir uh, so uh, you proceed the more practical way you, you are tomorrow you are going to be a consultant a patient of this uh, nature comes to you yes. how do you proceed tell me okay sir next so, uh, proceed then i will uh, do the first uh, i will assess the severity of uh, lymphedema sir mm. first mm. how will you so, assess uh, so i will do tape measurements uh, as mentioned uh, tape measurements are there sir i will assess uh, the circumference of the limb at the uh, multiple uh, levels so that uh, multiple at level, the level, no. level lower there top is, and there is an level international top. standard of that multiple level so do you know at what mm -hmm. level it has to be measured sir uh, 10 cm above the no, medial no. malleolus sir. from the tip of the great toe sorry up sir. to the heel first you keep the tape every four centimeters you mark okay okay then from the heel up to the end of the okay. inguinal region you keep the tape every four centimeters you mark there okay. are measuring scales uh, pre-made scales okay. uh, by jobs companies available so if you are a center where you are treating lot of lymphedema you can buy the scale so ask the patient to put the foot there and you can easily take out the every four uh, centimeters the circumference and note it down on day one that is on the first visit and then subsequently as you start your management or uh, as okay. you start uh, let it be a medical management or a surgical management every time when the patient comes you have to take the measurement then only you can assess is there any reduction at any of this given point so if you take every 10 centimeters or if you take on the mid calf or mid thigh or on the knee and this thing it will not give you an exact uh, progress about the disease for your medical management or um, you are going to do mld you have said in that uh, your k sheet i saw so whenever you, the patient comes you have to okay. take it in the same okay. level the measurement next you proceed yeah mm. okay other methods to assess the severity of lymphedema i have mentioned there's a water displacement method and uh, bio impedance spectroscopy to measure the amount of fluid uh, present are, in the are you using, uh, are, are you using analysis. that Sir, uh, in our center, we are using only tape. That is what I'm sir. saying. So you tell that alone. Because in many okay. centers, now that water displacement okay. technique, because some of the leg which you see in Punjabur, you must have seen huge leg. Mm -hmm. You cannot put the leg inside uh, any mm -hmm. water chamber to measure the displaced uh, volume. So this water displacement, no, is nobody mm -hmm. is doing in any center. And uh, next you mentioned about... Uh, the okay. tonometry, the uh, ah, yeah. all, all these things are not being done. So the circumferential measurement clinically, but you should okay. know these things are available, but uh, nobody mm -hmm. even in the Western okay. centers, they are not doing all these tests. Instead of this test, now there is a new okay. uh, handheld, uh, like your uh, Doppler handheld uh, moisture meter has come. So you can put in this fixed points which you have already marked, no, that every four centimeter. 
you can put okay. the noise meter and okay. see that whether there is any in, increase from the normal side and how much it is increased based on that more than the isl classification see isl classification is ideally suited for the lymphedema which you see in the western world but not to the lymphedema which we see in our country okay. in our country the best is tape measurement the classification is you put as who classification no this is otherwise known as jerusa dryer classification jerusa dryer is that lady who has found out there is an adult okay. dancing adult worm in the scrotum epididymo arcitis when a patient comes first with epididymo arcitis yes. that is the earliest sign of a lymphatic filariasis at that time if you put a 14 megahertz probe ultrasound probe you can see the adult dancing adult worm but now it is very difficult to see any dancing adult worm because all these patients come at a much la later stage to us uh, so first of all we have to educate our gps or our uh, colleagues to refer the patients to you as early as possible so that you can do a much uh, better yeah. job for the patient as well as he will be satisfied you will also be satisfied no point in sending a patient at the who classification otherwise known as jerusa dryas classification at grade 7 okay, okay. yeah uh, next proceed yeah okay sorry to interrupt this uh, being a teaching session yeah, i thought uh, i will tell you what is uh, relevant sir no problem sir no problem yeah. so, no, 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 okay. so that is then, what we uh, want uh, then i will do uh, uh, yeah yeah go ahead go ahead next yeah. then uh, i'll do ultrasound or mri uh, to assess the changes in the lymphatic system sir uh, it gives information about the soft tissue changes uh, dermal and uh, subcutaneous layer thickening honeycomb uh, even, pattern even, in the subcutaneous yeah, space even, and also yeah. about the yeah yeah I, uh, yes, i i heard you mri and ultrasound ultrasound as i said yes, is useful to locate the lymph nodes in the inguinal region or in the even iliac uh, but you should use a probe which is more than 14 megahertz pen type of probe okay that will show you okay. how many okay. lymph nodes and where are the lymph nodes so you can identify those things so that will help you the next thing you should okay. go is lymphocentigraphy because mri will not yes. go a lymphatic channel you cannot see a lymphatic channel in an mri okay unless it is very hugely okay. dilated but in lymphatic filariasis okay. or in any other lymphedema for that matter you don't see such a huge dilated lymphatics so mri is just a completion sake mentioning or sometimes when people who does this uh, okay. liposuction as a treatment for lymphedema no for them to as a be Yes, sir. fat that soft tissue volume and then after uh, the liposuction it is useful but in such cases this is clinically you have diagnosed it as a lymphatic filariasis common things are always common that is the most likely diagnosis even after your investigation so the next investigation after ultrasound should be your lymphocentigraph because in lymphocentigraph only you will see the entire track in one picture from head to foot you can see in one picture you can have a head to foot lymphatic channel okay. lymph nodes is there a dermal backflow is there a deep uh, nodes are palpable so all those things each one indicates some clinical finding which we will talk later so i would like you to say something about mm -hmm. lymphocentigraph how do you do and what you are expected to see in this case sir in a lymphocentigraphy it's a nuclear medicine study yeah. and it is a functional study which shows the functioning of the lymphatics okay. in the form of flow of the tracer in the limb yes it reveals abnormalities of uh, lymphatic flow lymph uptake in lymph nodes mm. ectatic and the tortuous lymph vessels and also mm. predict uh, response to the treatment Mm. the agents uh, commonly used are uh, technetium labeled sulfur colloids or uh, technetium labeled antimony trisulfide and mm. in our country we are using a uh, technetium labeled antimony trisulfide 
the yeah. dosage is uh, 200 microcuri to 2 millicuri is used oh. and uh, in this uh, uh, procedure the technetium labeled antimony sulfate colloid is uh, injected into the web space between mm. second and third toe or fingers of the affected extremity with a fine needle 28 or 30 gauge needle and the lymphatic is basically pick up both the legs or one leg sir we will uh, inject in both the legs sir. yes yes oh, yeah mm. okay good mm. go ahead the lymphatic specifically pick up these colloids and using gamma camera the extremity is scanned for uh, visualizing the lymphatics and their draining nodes mm. and uh, on the affected side there will be abnormal accumulation of the tracer colloid or mm. the slower clearance of the tracer colloid will be seen it mm. gives uh, also functional information such as movement of the lymph and thus helps in evaluating the response to the treatment modalities also yeah so you can plan what type of uh, treatment you are going to do for this particular patient mm -hmm. by looking at the lymphocentigram of this patient okay what what are you yes, uh, likely to see in the lymphocentigram of this patient or have you, if you have already done you tell me the findings uh sir uh, uh, i am supposed to see that uh, there will be a uh, uh, blockage uh, narrowing or a fibrosis of the lymphatics in uh, mainly in the right lower limb and also can be seen in the left lower limb also sir mm. see uh, this uh, it is a wrong concept which has been told even when i was an undergraduate in 70s that uh, there is an obstruction at the inguinal level that is why the lymph is not draining so this has been disproved and it is available in the who manual that when the adult worm you said no uh, i just wanted to yes. recollect here see the mosquito bites and the yes. Uh, uh, microfilaria enters the blood not the lymphatic system isn't it yes sir so when the microfilaria yes, enters sir. the blood by the mosquito bite how does it reach the lymphatic system have you have you ever thought about that see actually basically sir, uh, through the lymphatic duct no but see for example it bites in your leg or bites in your hand and uh, it okay. uh, goes into the automatically okay. the venous uh, blood only it cannot go uh, even go into the arterial blood okay. so it's all superficial mosquito bite uh, you know it is uh, yes superficial one so it will go into the blood stream okay. how did it reaches the lymphatic system when it is a microfilaria sorry it has got a special okay. character to go to the lymphatic system and live in the lymphatic system that nobody knows why it is what it is but people have studied okay. the micro um, filaria entering into the they have put microfilaria in the animal mm -hmm. and see how it goes into the lymphatic system and they have documented it they have got videos also from italy if you are interested you can see that so it goes into mm -hmm. the uh, lymph node and usually it says in the epididym mitis or scrotum or in the inguinal lymph node because of the temperature that is the ideal temperature uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, LF lymphatic. I mean, the one of these either band grafty or uh, Burugia malai or whichever band grafty wants to live there. The Timori we don't have only in Africa. Okay. They have okay. These two things will go there. In female, okay. it goes to the axilla, or it goes to the breast. So these are the common areas. Usually, this adult microfilaria goes and. produces its cycle and then it becomes an adult worm when it becomes an adult worm it does not know to come out of the lymphatic system you know lymphatic system is very highly netted one it is not like a clear arterial pathway or by pressure it can go once it gets into the artery it can or vein it can go into the named artery or vein it is not like that so this once it goes and stuck in the lymph node it it does not know how to come back into the 
regular blood circulation. So it survives as long as it stays there in the lymph node, it survives. That is why it survives maximum four years. Afterwards, when it dies, it releases an endotoxin. That endotoxin dilates the lymphatic. So all the lymphatic valves loses its function. The muscles which are supposed to push the lymph up when when you walk or when you do exercise, the lymphatics or when you do the breathing exercise, the lymphatic sacs, all these things get destroyed by the endotoxin, which is released during the death of the adult worm. So in all the lymphatic filariasis, the pathology is dilatation of the lymphatic vessel and architecture, loss of architecture of the lymphatic valves and the mus musculature, lymphatic okay. musculature. So these are the things that's happening. That's why it's not able to pump. That is why I told you it starts from the dorsum of foot. If it has to happen that way. But okay, in sir. your case, it is basically a genital lymphatic filariasis, which because of the pressure it keeps on yes, giving sir. by the collection of the lymphatic fluid, it starts coming into the retrograde. It is a dilated valvulus uh, lymphatics, you see. So it starts coming into the thigh. That is why the thigh is big, not the leg or the foot. Okay. Go ahead. What, did you do a lymphocytogram okay. for okay. this patient? Uh, no, sir. Uh, okay. No, no, no. Is, okay. What, uh, are, what are you supposed to given, see in a lymphocytogram of this patient, this particular patient? Sir, any tortuous or uh, uh, ectatic uh, lymph uh, lymphatic channels can be seen, sir. And uh, uh, okay. loss hmm. of the that is dilated. Uh, uh, there is a uh, backflow. Then a uh, backflow of the uh, this thing will be seen, sir. The tracer color. Hmm. Do you expect it to see multiple lymphatic channels? Normally, whenever there is a problem, the nature tries to open up the dormant lymphatics. There are normal dormant lymphaticovenous anastomosis in the body, like you have the arteriovenous anastomosis in the body, which are dormant. But when there is a hypertension, when there is a portal hypertension, it opens up. Like that in lymphatic system also, there are normal lymphaticovenous anastomosis at some sites. So, but it will try to open up if the lymph production uh, this is just an academic thing you know how much a lymph is produced in a person per day uh, i don't think i i don't expect it from you but you better know that it produces five to six liters of lymph the total blood volume is produced uh, as a lymph in one day in single day so this is being a chronic disease. Imagine okay. how big it must be in the over the 10 years. But as I told you, this dormant lymphaticovenous uh, things are getting opened by nature and some are getting drained into that. Where is the problem comes? When the problem comes okay. because of the secondary bacterial infection, which causes the lymphangitis or cellulitis. The more the number of cellulitis attack, the more the number of lymphangitis attack, these uh, alternate channels also get inflamed. Your lymph node becomes small, naughty, okay. and the blood vessels are uh, destroyed. So it is no more uh, functions as a normal lymphatico venous channels. Otherwise, every lymph node has got an artery vein in the cortex, so it should function well. It is all basically okay. because of any lymphedema, irrespective of the okay. etiology. If the lymphedema is progresses, it is basically because of secondary infection, secondary bacterial infection, not because of the primary cause. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah, okay. this is applicable to all type of lymphedema. For example, okay. in a post mastectomy lymphedema, they have removed the lymph node. That's all. Then why the arm is becoming bigger and bigger? Okay. Every time they get lymphangitis, every time they get cellulitis, 
because in uh, post uh, cancer uh, edema the lymphatic channels are absolutely normal there is no disease in the lymphatic channels but the junction boxes are removed but mm -hmm. even then these lymphatic channels yes, are destroyed because of the repeated attacks of the lymphangitis or cellulitis that is why a lymphedema progresses why a lymphedema okay. progress is basically because of the repeated attacks of secondary infection yes doctor proceed secondary yeah. Mm. So uh, th that is one thing. Dilated so then, uh, multiple multiple channels you can see. Then can you see in this particular case anything else? Yes, there will be a crossover if you do a good uh, lymphocentigram. You can see the scrotum and the penis in your lymphocentigram. Usually, normally, you are not supposed to see scrotum and penis in your lymphocentigram. It goes to the lymph node of the inguinal region and then it goes to the suprailiac and then paraiotic, then uh, system chyla. You can, it can go up to the neck, you can see, and there are uh, lymphatic channel which comes from the neck and then joining into the subclavian. Up to that, you can see if you take a picture. Uh, of lymphocentigram but in this case you will see the scrotum also and the penis also you can see the outline of the scrotum and the penis okay. you can see so that means from both sides it is crossing over okay. so this helps you in planning your management okay uh, go ahead uh, uh, what else yes. yeah Uh, then uh, I will also do ultrasonogram of uh, abdomen to rule out uh, any other intra-abdominal pathology yes, and ultrasonogram of scrotum to also to rule out uh, hydrocele as frequently associated with uh, genital lymphedema. Good, uh, hydrocele. And, and I will also do even, venous even a study tumor, of the... Even a tumor and a secondary thing, you have to rule out. So you have to do an ultrasound of the scrotum uh, as well as an ultrasound of the abdomen. Because sometimes, uh, the history-wise, you say it is only for two years. So something can be pressing on the pelvis also can cause a genital edema first. So you have to rule out before you keep your okay. knife. A good doctor. Uh, next. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. And I also do venous Doppler study of the right lower limb to rule out deep vein thrombosis and venous insufficiency, which is a contraindication for the physiological procedures of lymphedema. Not only contraindication, it is a, what shall I say, differential diagnosis also. So it's better to rule out the okay, differential sir. diagnosis. That is one thing. Second thing, there is nothing which prevents same patient having venous problem as a less lymphatic problem because it is quite common around in the all over the world. The statistics okay. says around seventy percent of the patients with lymphedema. We have got venous problem also. It can be a superficial venous dilatation or an associated deep vein thrombosis, depending upon like if the patient is obese or if the patient is thin with the superficial veins. So you have to do a Doppler for all these purposes. Yes, good. Huh. Next. Yes, 